everybody. I want to welcome you to the Easton Book Festival 2020. Um, this is a virtual, um, just because we couldn't all be in person. Today we are going to have a webinar on Introduction to NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month. My name is Laurel Wenson. I'm going to be your moderator for the next hour or two. And um, we're going to jump in. I'll be introducing our panelists in just one moment. But for those of you that are joining us, um, some of you might be fellow NaNoWriMers, and, and you are writers alongside of us. Some of you may just be thinking about it and what exactly is it. NaNoWriMo began in 1999. It is a nonprofit agency, and its goals are to provide structure, community, and encouragement to writers from around the world. Its general goal is that we sit down on November 1st, and by November 30th, we will have written 50,000 words and have a novel, or at least part of a novel. That being said, there's a lot more to it than that. So we'll get into that. But without further ado, I'm going to introduce our panelists. Um, you will note if um, any of you are here, we also have somebody from the Easton Book Festival in the background as our, our audio tech person. We're very grateful for their help and support in getting all this started. I also want to give a shout out to the Greater Lehigh Valley Writers Group, who is um, helping to put some of these groups together. Um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce um, Christine Talley, and she is going to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about her writing experience and her experience with NaNo very briefly, because then we'll get into the details as we go. Take it away, Christine. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Christine Talley. Um, I have written short stories and poems over many years, but I've only written one novel. One poem has been published by the Glivwig anthology, The Right Connections. My novel is The Girl and the Bird, Romance and Alien Power in the Current Middle Ages, self-published with a four-star rating on Amazon using KDP and selfpublicbookcovers.com. Um, my point of view is from someone who wrote during NaNoWriMo I highly re recommend NaNo to anyone who says, I'm going to start this, or surely I'll finish this someday soon, which never seems to happen. NaNo was a good cattle prod to me, and they have an extremely good online and local support. I had maybe three sentences of an idea, that's all. And the first NaNo that I did, I wrote 23,000 words but got behind and stopped. Then I kept telling myself for several years that I'd finish someday, right? But I liked what I had written so far. So another nano came along several procrastinating years later and I dug in my heels and committed myself to writing 1,667 words per day. And I finished the 50,000 words and won that year. Nano gives winners a lot of resources to a new writer. By the way, I found KDP very helpful for self-publishing and took advantage of them shamelessly, asking them questions all the time, and they were very, very helpful. Thanks so much, Christine. And we will now introduce um, Sue Monroe, who works at the Emmaus Public Library. I believe she works with youth services, but Tell us a little bit about yourself, Sue. Well, I cannot remember a time when I was not telling stories. Uh, we, we start as children and we are full of ideas and full of stories. And as we grow up, we continue to write them in our heads, even if we don't write them down. Uh, I started with NaNoWriMo in 2003. I was a uh, fairly young mother and I had a group of friends who were involved in it and had been for years. And they, they suggested that I write my stories down. Um, I have written uh, reviews. I've written for Wild Violet, which is a literary magazine. And I have had some stories published in the Greater Lehigh Valley Writers Group anthologies. But uh, NaNo was a chance for me to write whatever I wanted to try. And I have managed to finish three of uh, six of those years uh, where I've gotten 50,000 or more uh, words written. Uh, 
I tend to think, I, I often have people tell me that they would love to be a writer, but they just could never do it. And Nano gives you the opportunity to try that, to write something, even if you don't get to 50,000 words, to just put the words down. And I know some people who have started with Nano who would never have written a book on their own. And it's good to have that community where we can all talk to each other or with the Nano meetings in the Lehigh Valley, pre-COVID, where we would all get together on a, on a Wednesday or Thursday night and write together. Uh, my library does have uh, Nano meetups uh, called Write-Ins uh, each November. And we also have a Young Writers Project. So I will be talking about that later. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, this time I'd like to introduce uh, Misty Flight Reinhold, and she is going to tell us a little bit about what she has written and where she is in terms of RIMO right now. Thanks for this opportunity to tell my story again. I, people who know me know the story that I got my first rejection when I was 12. And that is over 60 years ago. I wrote a short story for Family Circle magazine when they were still publishing short stories. I wish I'd kept the short story and the rejection, but I guess, you know, I was 12. I threw them out. So that's how it started. And it kept going. I wrote, I would write stories when I was, I went to nursing school of all things. And during my classes, my microbiology class, especially because I was bored, I would write stories. I would still, I got good grades and I still passed and became an RN. And then I got married and then I had a baby and then I stopped writing because I didn't have quote the time. And I got a divorce and then I was the mother, single mother, and still I didn't write. I was going to get married again, second marriage, and my fiance died. Saw him in his casket and I said, you know what? You're 42 years old. Time to do what you want to do or you're never going to do it. So then I really started writing for good. I did freelancing for the Easton Express. I wrote for the Easton Irregular. I wrote short stories, was published in children's short stories. But the novel that was inside of me never seemed to get out because it would take so long, so many words, <clears throat> until Nano came around. And I thought, you know, may as well give it a shot. I was working full time. But I still was able to do NANO. I started in 2003, four years after NANO started. And I did it several years. I checked my NANO screen the other day, and I have 233,000 words written. I don't have them all in book form because I'm not as um, industrious as some ladies on this panel. But maybe I will be. Maybe I need this group to push me forward to get them out there. The, my screen behind me <clears throat> is the one book I do have self-published. It's called The Guardian's Prophecy, and it's about a good werewolf. And so that's me and Nano. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mitzi. We're glad that you're here. and it's, um, <laughs> It's amazing to me how we all have those stories inside of us and sometimes it takes nano or something to get us started. Um, last but not least, before I'll, I'll introduce myself last, but I'm gonna introduce um, our youngest on the panel today, but probably one that has some of the most experience with nano and, and that is Rebecca Winson. Rebecca, tell us a little bit about what Hi. brought you to nano. I'm Rebecca, I'm 21. So I'm kind of the young whippersnapper here but I've been doing nano since I was 11. I started in 2010. And since then I've done it every year because I can't stop. My first year was kind of a half win 
where I finished the book, but I was 11, so it was less than 50,000 words. Um, the next two years were complete failures. I gave up within the first two weeks. And then after that, I won in like 2013, and I've consistently gotten to 50,000 every year since. I don't have anything really published right now. I'm not sure if I want to publish, but I'm still writing because once you write, you can't stop. So that's basically me. I know it's not very exciting, but. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, again, my name is Laurel, and I have to say that it was Rebecca. She is my daughter, and she is the one that got me to get the stuff inside my head finally onto the page. Um, I started writing when I was a kid. I would write stories. I would write plays. I grew up in Concord, Massachusetts, which is a really rich, literal town with Thoreau and Alcott and Hawthorne and Emerson. So I was surrounded by books and writing at a young age. My favorite place was the library. And I wrote my very first book when I was in eighth grade. It was called The Mystery of Grizzly Mountain. Wrote it by hand on notebook paper. And at some point it got tossed. I would have loved to have had it in my hands now to be able to go back and laugh at it. Over the years, I was more or less in a teaching and administrative role. Um, I taught English and theater to the homeschool community and did that for over 15 years. And as I did my directing for the various musicals every year, my students would say, you should write this down. You should write a book about all of this. And it wasn't until I retired in 2016 that I thought, you know, I really should just write this down. Um, so in 2017 for Camp Nano, my daughter had kept egging me on saying, you should just do Nano. You should just do Nano. And I thought, I think I'm gonna sit down and do it. And um, the first book I sat down in April, which was Camp Nano. It was only 23,000 words, but it had a million diagrams as well. And that was the goal. Um, that was published in 2019. And then in 2018, I decided to do the real thing and sat down across the dining room table from my daughter and we did Nano together and finished my first novel. And that was just published in July of this year. Um, and then in July of this year, I decided, oh, why not just go back to camp and do book two and get that out of the way. And that's actually being published in December of this year. Um, I just got my book cover this morning. So um, Nano is going to be book three. So I'm kind of on a roll. And I figure I better write the entire four book series so that I don't forget the characters' names and things like that before I'm done. But I guess my motto has always just been, you know, you just finally have to sit down and do it. You know, nobody else can take the ideas out, out of your head and put it on paper. So if you're, if you're one of these people that says, I love to write, I would love to be able to do that, sit down and just do it. Um, you have to remember that while the goal overall of NaNo is to get that 50,000 words done, it's really designed to get you to write regularly. That's really the overall goal. Um, there are times during the year, I don't write every single day, but if I hadn't done NaNo, I never would be where I am today in my writing career and my disciplines. I mean, that's really what it's been. It's been, it's given you the structure, but it's also given support and encouragement. There's some great people. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the history of NaNo. It started in 1999 um, by Chris Brady. He was a writer out in the San Francisco area. And he had this idea that he wanted to sit down and write a book. So he thought, I'm going to get a few of my friends together, and we're going to sit down and do this. And so in July of 1999, there were 21 people that sat down, and six of them got to their 50,000 words. Um, and he was one of them. And they decided the next year that rather than do it in July, they were going to do it in November because it was cold and rainy and people wanted to go inside anyway. So we might as well have a better time to write. And that year, there were 140 people that joined. And of the 140, 29 of them made it to the end with that 50,000 um, word goal. After that, they had their, um, Nana was published a little bit and talked about in some um, local press. And by year three, there were 5,000 people that were signing up. Last year in Nana, there were almost a half a million people from around the world. 
And that doesn't just include adults, it includes over 100,000 youth in the Young Writers Program, which we'll talk about with Sue. Um, they generally now have nano activities throughout the year. They have nano in November, which is the main one. But then in April and July, they have camp nano, which is where you can set lower word goals, or you can might just say that your goal is to do revisions, or it might be for editing. You basically create your own goal for Camp Nano. Same idea, the same you know camaraderie and the same support, but it doesn't have that 50,000. If that seems a little daunting, then maybe Camp Nano is a good place to start because then you can set your goal at whatever you want it to be. Um, they do have in Nano something called the the, uh, the Nano Rebels which are people who participate during the month of November, but they're not there to write a novel. They're there maybe to finish revising, or maybe they're there to write poetry, or they're there to write a cookbook. Um, so, or any kind of nonfiction would, you know, basically put you in the rebel status. And that's okay, because they're still there to write, and that's what it's all about. Um, Sue had mentioned that they have the, uh, the write-ins, um, and that's not just for, um, regular nano, that's throughout the year. There are some things online that they will have activities where you can go and you can write. Um, I know that I went to the Bethlehem Library a couple of times for the write-ins during nano. They did it every Saturday afternoon, but they do have them virtually right now, and you can go on and find virtual nano write-ins um, a lot of the time. Um, so they also have just started in January and February something called What Now? And that's really designed for the person who's finished their novel in November and now has no idea what to do with it. Um, and it will kind of get you at least giving you tips on how to go about the next step toward whether or not you're going to try to send it out for a traditional publication or publish it yourself. Um, I myself self-published all three of mine. Um, I think self-publishing is a growing field. I think most people are, I, I don't want to give the control up. I like to give it, take take charge of every step of the way. Um, I'd like to get into a little bit of how we all prepare for NaNo. Um, I know some of us um, are called plotters, where we sit down and we want to have our characters relatively developed and our plot relatively developed. We might have a chapter outline ready to go so that we kind of know where we're heading. And there might still be a few surprises along the way, but we have a general overview. Others are called pantsers, and I think Christine alluded to this when she was talking. Um, pantsers, <laughs> Sue was raising her hand. Uh, pantsers are those people that sit down on November 1st and say, I think I'm going to write a book. Let's see, what should I write about? Or they might have a rough idea or maybe a couple of characters, and they really just sit down and trust the process. They let their characters lead, they let the plot lead. Um, that honestly scares me to death if I don't have a character outline and a plot line, so I'm definitely a plotter. But we're going to hear a little bit about how different those two different groups prepare because we might prepare a little bit differently. So as we talk now in this next section, we're going to talk about how we prepare. Like, are we number one a, a planner, uh, a pantser, or a planter, which is kind of a, a combination of the two? And you know, what do you do? What are your goals for this year? Why are you doing it this year? And talk a little bit about how you are getting ready and where you are uh, in, that, in that. We still have two weeks, so you don't have to really be very far along that process. Because anybody that's considering doing NaNo is at least starting to think about it. And so this will help them to see that the planning, the planning stage itself can be very long and drawn out, or it can be literally sitting down at midnight on November 1st saying, okay, let's just get this started and see where it goes. Um, I think I'll look, I'd like to mix it up a little bit. I know, Sue, you've done, um, you've done nano probably, I think, even more than Rebecca has. So I'm going to let you take that first, and then we'll move on to someone else. So how do you prepare? Well, I think a lot about the story I'm going to be doing. Um, so Although I do not have an outline written, I have given thought to the characters and what I, in general, I want to do. Uh, oftentimes the characters take the story in a direction I did not have planned. So having a plan, I most often throw it away anyway. So for me, it's just 
character driven. But the first thing I do for Nano every year is I buy a brand new notebook and a brand new blank book, and then I don't use them at all. And they're all piled up next to my bed. I have never written in any of them. Um, I do most of my writing on a, on a legal pad. And uh, I write whenever the idea takes me, which could be just about anywhere. Um, I often write when I am sitting and waiting for something, an idea will come to me and I'll just start to, to keep going with the story or I'll have an idea about why this character would be doing something the way that they do. Um, I try not to start writing anything before November 1st. I know that not everybody does that, but I'm one of those, those people who it doesn't start till November 1st at 12.01 a.m. So I will stay up till 12.01 to start writing. And I do try to write a certain amount every day. That doesn't always work. Um, I had been doing pretty well from 2012 to 2017 with getting 50,000 words every year. Um, in 2018, my father passed away um, in November. And as, as I was sitting with him, it, well, I was trying to write. It was, it was very difficult. And uh, last year, I also tried to write about my father's passing. And that story um, is going to be published in March in the anthology for the Greater Lehigh Valley Writers Group. But things that are happening in the world around you at the time definitely affect what you are writing and how much you accomplish and what you're doing in the course of your writing. Um, so pantsing is just pretty much letting your creative juice take you where it goes, like a big river. So. Okay, thank you so much, Sue. Um, now that we've had one of the panthers, let's ask Rebecca to jump on board because she is definitely probably the queen of the plotters. Um, and she, um, although she probably has a few notebooks next to her bed. Um, but Rebecca, I tell us. Three. No, wait, I have four. I have four. Tell us your process because yours is pretty, um, pretty intricate. I like to keep it as structured as I can every year. I usually start thinking about nano around September 1st because I want as much time as I can to like get notes ready and depending on the year I'll sometimes have multiple ideas that I'm trying to choose from and I'll have to like list pros and cons of each one and think like how would I feel writing this one or how would I feel writing this one. This year it was actually pretty easy because I just went with one that I'd projected last year. So I didn't have to think about that part. But then I go and kind of I go into the development phase, which I basically just I write down what I have in mind so far. And then I just ask myself a bunch of questions and what ifs like, what if this thing happened? Or what if that thing happened? And I try to figure out what I want the overall story arc to be. I try to figure out what my characters want. I try to figure out where everything is going to go and what the subplots are. And that can take a while because it's hard to figure out a plot. There's a lot of details. But once that's done, I usually craft like a basic chapter outline and try to figure out like, okay, what scenes are happening, what needs to happen in those scenes, because if I don't have a chapter layout, I get stuck. I need like a map. I'm very linear when I write. And then after that, I'll work more on character development a little bit. Like this year, I finished the chapter outline, so I'm working on like character bios with like questionnaires that I found online. And then once November hits, it's then everything gets crazy. And I'm usually pretty good at sticking to the outline, but sometimes there are like little deviations here and there. 
and I try to write I try to write like around 1,667 to 2,000 words a day, especially in the first week, which is, first week is just write as many words as possible <laughs> because it will get harder later. But that's my process, basically. Okay, that is definitely different. I mean, starting September 1st, it just blows my mind every time. Um, Let's go to Christine. And Christine, I am seeing here that I have to ask you to unmute. So I don't know that I can unmute you from here. So if you would unmute yourself, then you can, I can meet you at the end, but share how you prepare. Are you a pantser? Are you a plotter? And what do you do to get ready? Okay, well, I'm definitely a pantser. Um, as for writing during nano, you probably shouldn't write if you have major life events going on, like taking care of my father. I got behind early. It is possible to catch up, but it's a serious commitment. For me, I have to write 1,667 words per day for it to work for me. And it's hard to make up if you get behind. So I had to wait another year to commit myself. I really did start out with only the vaguest idea of what I was going to write about. So I was a panster, literally flying by the seat of my pants a lot of the time. Some people like to prepare months in advance, with outlines and characters all lined up, and that's fantastic if you can do it. Uh, the local nano support group gets together and physically at least in the past but probably um, virtual now but they are still great encouragement and can help you bounce off ideas if you're stuck um, my first day the first words I wrote were literally what was I thinking and I just sat there for a while trying to think Luckily, I came up with the idea to write as a main character in a medieval reenactment group, the Society for Creative Anachronism. As someone who got really drunk the night before and overslept the day of a battle. That's all I had to write about the first day of NaNo. And then each day grew from that start. It helped that I could write about something I was familiar with since I'd been a sword and shield fighter for nine years, but you can let your imagine fly and write about whatever you want to write about. Um, some days I hardly had any idea of what I was going to write about, but sat down to write anyway. Nano has a word tracker that helps keep a score of each day's achievement, and I highly recommend using it. It really helped me. Um, it was a good cattle prod for me. Somehow my storyline turned into the romances of four main characters. I'm not sure how it happened, but my characters made me do it. Or at least that's how it felt sometimes. Sometimes they knew where to go more than I did. That was a really good thing for my panster soul. I realized I wanted to write the stories about the ugly girl getting the handsome guy instead of the beautiful one, and about the damaged girl struggling with her romance with a sword fighter on the opposing side. Then, since I love science fiction, an alien power came to mind that I had to work into the story. So there you go. Three sentences of plot. That's it. Three sentences of plot and characters was all I had to start pantsing away. It helps to have an awesome coach, in my case, my husband, who encouraged me when I didn't have a clue. If you don't have a clue what to write about, a tragedy or a terrible illness or accident that you can throw at your characters and move things along, yeah. I got those ideas from the Nano Encouragement for Panster's book, No Plot, No Problem, by Chris Beatty, which I read ahead of November because I knew I was in trouble. I guess the ideas sort of percolated in my brain. 
helping me by spilling out without a conscious clue when November came. Chocolate as a reward helped too. Thank you, Christine. Uh, all right, that was, again, another Panther story and it tells us that there is no wrong way to do nano. Um, Mitzi, we're gonna go to you, because I think that you might be, is this, the, is this your first time with Nano officially, or are you just coming back after not being there? But that, if you are a newbie, it would be a great um, Oh, unfortunately, I've been doing Nano off and on since okay. 2003. But you're coming back, um, so give us, coming give, back. Us a, give us a rundown. So. Well, I'm, this year, I'm taking a book that I have about 20,000 words done in already. And I have characters and I have the plot to a certain extent already in my head, but not written out. And I'm going to finish this book since my critique group seems to like it. Maybe somebody else will too. Who knows? Maybe I'll get an agent, you know, one of those things. But that's what I'm going to do for Nano. Usually before this, this project, I was a pantser. I would have it in my head what I wanted to write about. I would think about it. Now, a lot of writers are like this. We think about it, we see it like a movie playing in our heads. And I think that's almost like being a plotter, but it's not written down plot. And then you get down and you start to write it. And just like everybody else has said, the characters sometimes say, no, 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 I'm going this way. I don't care if you want me to go that way. I'm going this way. And I've had that happen to me a couple of times. In the book I did have self-published, I had a character just appear. I didn't even know I was going to have him. He said, look, my name is Yayoti, and I want to be in this book. So I had to write about him. So plotting, I don't do. Thinking about it, I like, I do. Remember in this um, Music Man, Thinkology, he taught the kids to think about the music. You think about what you're writing. You think about it and you think about it. And then November 1st, you get to writing it. I'm not a, I'm a thinker, not a plotter. <laughs> That's how I prepare. Poorly. <laughs> okay. That's, I guess I'll finish up. Um, I am another plotter. Um, I probably am an over plotter, if there is such a thing. Um, maybe it's my teacher background, but I usually start with my characters. Um, it's, I, I started with my series. It was about a girl named Tegan, and it was just, I had always loved the name. And from there, I developed my character first. Like, who are, who are these people? What are, you know, who are they like? Then I developed the story from there. Um, I will sit down literally and do a two or three page character dossier for every single character. I know what their birthdays are. I know what zodiac sign they are. I know what their plus, you know, their strengths and their weaknesses are. Um, I I do research. If uh, this this past book, I was doing research for like where they were going to go to school, um, and I had to go to those schools to find out what programs they had. I like to bring in as much research and reality in the planning process. And then I continue on throughout the month to stop and do more research. We'll talk about that when we get to the actual nano experience when we're in November. Um, but first I develop my characters and I, I have to really love my characters. I've gotten to the point now where after you write about them in the, um, because I'm doing a series, they really become like your friends. And I think, um, the best review that I had from my first novel was that somebody said that she wished that these characters were her friends because they were all just really, really neat, dynamic people. And that to me, you know, if my reader can make a connection with the people in the story, that's really my ultimate goal. Because if you don't care about the characters, then you can have the best plot in the world, but you're not going to be as invested. Um, once I have my characters and I figure out an overall storyline or arc, then I start just really brainstorming. I literally will sit down and just write out random plot points, like this could happen, this could happen, this could happen. 
And as I, as I brainstorm, I then kind of group them in together and see if I can't then develop some kind of a plot line as to what will the major conflicts be, what will be some of the, the, the conflicts along the way. Um, I also develop my point of view at that point. Like, is the story going to be told from one person's point of view? Is it going to be a multiple point of view? Um, the first book I wrote was from one person's point of view. The second book was from another character in the same town's point of view. This third book that I'm starting with for this Nano is going to be a little different. I'm going to do a multiple point of view. And um, so once I develop that, then I have to figure out, okay, you know, from this person's point of view, what chapters are going to be happening to them and what part of the story will they be able to tell us? Um, and then I look at the other character and I do the same. Once I write them all down, I literally get out my markers and I color code them. Like this is this person and this is this person. I, like I said, I'm a little anal when it comes to plotting, I think. Um, then I develop my chapter outline. And from there, I start. Now, I have had the experience where halfway through, all of a sudden, my characters decide, no, we don't like this. We're going to do something different. So in some ways, I guess I would call myself a planter, which is I plan and I have everything written down. And then my characters laugh at me and say, no, we're going to do this instead. And I have had a few chapters in the middle of a story where I am figuring out how do I get back on that, that arc that I've already designed. So um, it's an experience. Um, again, when I get to the end of the book, if I can still love my characters and I love the growth that most of them have undergone, um, I think that's really what my major goals are for writing. Um, Nano is what pushes me to sit down and do it. You know, I can have all the great stories in the world, but if I don't have something kind of prodding me to say, you need to sit down and write it. Um, last year I had gone back to school and I went to um, North Anson Community College has a new program called Publishing for Writers. And I was in the pilot program on its two classes. You learn about um, traditional publishing and then you learn about self-publishing. And between the instructor and the other people in that class, they are the ones that really, really kept me accountable and kept me going. Um, and then when I got into a critique group, um, that's just a further, you need, those, you need those people around you to keep you going. And so even in the planning stage, I kind of run my ideas on uh, different people to say, do you think this is going to work? Do you think this is going to work? Um, so by November 1st, I have a pretty good idea of where I'm going um, and I'm open to change. So I guess that's the best way to describe my planning process. At this point, we're going to segue into how we actually experience the month of November. Um, and, and Christine tackled it a little bit when she said, you know, you have three sentences and Sue said she stayed up until midnight. I know that Rebecca stays up and writes like a thousand words, I think, that first night. I have to stay up and at least get something on the page. It seems like, we, you know, we all, I think, just have to start as early as we can in, on November 1st. So let's talk a little bit, and I know um, this may be off the cuff a little bit. What is it like for you? on November 1st, when you are just starting, what is your thought process? We'll do really quickly around just like where, um, do you have fear? Do you have excitement? Do you have um, like, what am I doing here? Um, but what is your um, overall feeling on November 1st? Let's just do that. And then we'll kind of go into how we get through the month. So let's start this time. Uh, let's go to Rebecca. Let's have you start this one right off the bat. I have all of those feelings that you listed. Fear, excitement, what am I doing? Even though I've done it for years, it's still that same like, oh God, I can't do this. This is really hard and scary. But it's also, it's fun and it lights kind of a fire in me that I don't, always have the rest of the year. I do like to stay up until midnight on Halloween. It's like kind of a tradition and I try to write as much as I can in that like hour. Normally I'm, I'm, it's like the most motivated that I am of the month. It's like, I just, I'm excited. It's like, I get to explore. 
a new world and new characters and new stories and themes and that's just that's always exciting okay uh let's go to sue what do you like on november 1st what is that overall first day like for you well i have two things <laughs> for myself i'm really very excited but i'm also responsible for the young writers program here at the library and that's always a how am I going to do this and get all these kids on board and support them in their writing, which is kind of a panicky feeling. Um, I, I do love to write. Uh, the issue for me is usually finding time and space to write without people interfering. <laughs> I, have, I have a family and they know that it's November and after they've interrupted me, they say, oh wait, it's Nano. <laughs> so um, I have, my husband has been getting more involved in it. He is not at the point where he's going to write anything himself yet, but he has attended some of the Nano meetings where we're all ready to start. Um, I spend most of October waiting for the day so I can actually start writing because I'm thinking so much about it in October and that's when I really probably should be starting my writing. However, I'm waiting for November 1st and then it's like, okay, I'm off. Which part do I start with of all the things that I had already thought about and planned for this? Where do I start? But once you get the paper and you start writing or start typing, it kind of starts moving from there. So also, you know, they make us type with our nose. That's one of the things for Nano and Lehigh Valley Rimos, they make you type with your nose. It's entirely voluntary, but I can tell you that every year I type words with my nose to start off the event. Maybe not the first thing I write, but at some point in the beginning, that's something that I will be doing. So. I love that. That's great. I, I, I have not written anything with my notes, but I might have to try that. The teens uh, find it hysterical. I'm sure they do. <laughs> Christine, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself so that you can share. What is, um, I know that you shared a little bit of November 1st. Do you have any other feelings for like what that first day is like for you? You have to unmute your, um, there you go. Still, you're still, uh, you're still muted. I can't unmute you from here. Okay, there I had go. to find the button. It was invisible until I tapped it. Okay. Um, well, for me, there was a feeling of kind of panic um, since I was, Enhancing. And um, like I said, the first words I wrote down were, what was I thinking? And that really was what was going through my head. And um, so there was kind of a feeling of, of panic, but then a calm sort of hit me. And the ideas started to kind of flow. Um, my muse came and sat on my shoulder, I guess, and um, helped me with the idea. Um, like I said, I was a sword fighter for nine years, so that gave me something interesting to start with, at least. Um, and that helped me move along until my characters started dragging me along and they decided where I was going to go sometimes. Um, and like I said, chocolate as a reward helped with me. Um, it, it doesn't hurt to give yourself some kind of reward when you finish for the day. If you've, you know, even if you, ha even if you didn't finish, you just, 
tried, you did your best, and God give yourself credit for that. Because it is the month of November, it is an investment, and you can do it. It's something that you don't realize you can do until you actually sit down and you do it. At least that's how it was with me. Because I, I really didn't have much idea of what I was going to do. Three sentences. And I took it from there. But I really encourage people to, to give it a try. Because it's an amazing experience. Um, you really feel a sense of pride when, when you've gotten even part of it done. It's just you've started something, started something amazing that not everybody on the planet can say that they've done. And it's just kind of an amazing experience. Okay, that's great. Thanks. And Mitzi, let's hear, um, what is your feeling on November 1st when you just are sitting down at that blank page? Blank screen. Let, well, let me go in two different ways. When I started NANO, I was working full time as an, a nurse. I was working for a company. I was like an, an administrative type of nurse. And I'm sorry, but it's a difficult job. And it was like November 1st was, am I really going to do this again? How am I going to do this again? I'm, I'm traveling across the state sometimes. I'm in an office all day. How am I going to do this? Well, Mitzi would get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and start writing. And then sometimes she'd stay up late and she'd be writing with her eyes half closed when she was working. Then she retired. And when she retired, she started to write every day anyway. And I was writing on medium.com, short pieces. <clears throat> I have about 400 pieces on medium, 700 if you include all my comments. So now November 1st is going to be just like another day for me, only I'm going to have to write more words than usual. I'm going to have to write almost 2,000 that day instead of maybe 1,000. <clears> and I think that's what the difference is. The difference is what happened in my life made November 1st a little bit different for me. Thanks, Mitzi. Um, I think that what you, you just keyed in on that you, you know, you have to write 1,667 words. Um, that is the overall goal that NANO gives you. If you write that number every day, then by day 30, you have 50,000 words. So that they are really trying to just stress that you don't have to sit down and, and write 5,000 words at a time. Um, I know that my daughter once, I believe, wrote um, 10,000 words in one day, um, which mind bog is just mind boggling to me. Um, I know that I've had days during the month where I've had higher, I always aim for 2000 if I can. That first day when I sat down and it was like, you're looking at that blank screen. I, I, it's like, I, I tried, you know, okay, get a hook. You just need a good hook to get them started. And then from there, we'll see where we go. You have your outline. Um, I kind of took off and was running. I think for me, the very first day, I realized that it was gonna be hard for me to not want to go back and revise as I wrote my first draft. Um, as a teacher who has spent years, um, you know, editing students' work and, you know, giving suggestions on how to make it stronger and revising, well, that's, I was having my editor, I had to tell my editor in my head to shut up because I just, my, my daughter would come and she said, just get the words on the page because that's what the first draft is. The first draft is not meant to be pretty. It's not meant to be finished. It's not even meant to necessarily make a lot of sense in certain parts, but the first draft is meant to get the words out of your head and onto the page. And then from there, you can go into the revision, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the revision process at the end here. But the first day is excitement. 
Um, I think the very first time I sat down for Nano for the very first time, um, there was excitement, but there was also a little bit of fear, like what if I don't do this? Um, I also had the um, incentive that my daughter had been doing this successfully every year and we have a little bit of competitiveness between us so that we can prod each other and we can help celebrate each other's word counts and you know seeing those bars on the um, status bar going up which I'll talk about in a minute um, and also just encourage each other when we're having a bad day um, so the beginning is all those feelings and I um, to start and, and then say, okay, I got through day one. Now what do I do? Well, day one is no different than every other day. You're just gonna keep going. And so now we're gonna just start to talk a little bit about how do you get through the month of November? Um, what um, are your biggest challenges? What things are the hardest for you to get through? Um, what are the ways or what are some of the resources that you might use? There are lots of resources that we can talk about during this time. And um, what helps you the most to stay motivated? And rather than do that all at once, let's break it up a little bit. Um, uh, you can kind of go on as long as you want, but then I might come back and we may do some more back and forth in between. I'll ask some questions just to, to, to round things out a little bit. But what is your overall process in terms of staying on track? What things help you to keep going through the month? And what resources do you use? Um, and let's start this time with, let's see, Rebecca, you haven't started one yet. So why don't you start this one? Okay. Um, snacks are definitely good motivation. I, I have, my mom gets me like a little gift every year. It's just a cardboard box full of like little snacks and chocolate. So every day I know once I reach my goal, I can have something tasty. So that's nice. Um, I try to update my word count every day because one of the badges available on the NaNoWriMo website, they will award a badge. For if you update every day and I am competitive and a perfectionist so I always shoot for that. One thing that helps me stay on track in terms of word count and just like actually just sitting down and getting the words down is I keep um, in a separate document I have a progress log. So it's kind of like a writing journal where it's every day I'll write the date, I'll write what chapter I'm on, how many words I have and how like what word count I want to reach that day and then I'll just kind of write about how I'm feeling about writing and the vast majority of the entries in there start with I don't want to write right now <laughs> it's it's like some variation of that but I know that I have to and it helps because it gets me into the mindset of writing without actually like jumping right into the story itself, if that makes sense. Um, in terms of the sort of resources that I use throughout the month, I sometimes like pop on to the NaNoWriMo forums, which are a great resource because everybody there is so supportive and funny and they understand exactly what you're going through, whether it's you're having a really good month or an okay month or a really bad month. I also use word sprints, which are basically you set a timer for however long you want and you write as many words as you can in that allotted time period. And you can run them yourself. The NaNoWriMo website does have a timer or you can use your kitchen timer or your phone timer or whatever. But on Twitter, there is also um, an account called Nano Word Sprints where volunteers get to like run sessions where they'll be like okay we're gonna we're gonna go for five minutes starting at this time and they'll include like writing prompts and themes and you get to report back like oh this is how many words I wrote this time and it's very encouraging and supportive no matter how you're feeling or how much you write that I credit that Twitter account with a lot of my first win because I that was the year I discovered word sprints 
and it just kept me going. So those are kind of the things that help me stay on track and keep going throughout the month. Okay, I like, um, and again, she just touched upon a couple of really, um, really helpful resources that NANO puts out. Um, NanoRIMO has a website that anybody who is going to join can track your progress. You can set up a profile. You can find buddies um, and, and have a, a little group that you can try to converse with during the month. Um, the forums are great. They you can always find a, an answer to any question you might have or support for an issue that you're dealing with. And then there are things like the social media and the write-ins. Um, there are local nano groups all over the place. Um, Sue, I do believe that you are in the local um, Lehigh Valley RIMO group. So I was going to ask if you want to go next and talk about, again, how you stay on track, what resources, what motivates you the most. Well, for, for me, November is a very difficult month for educators to write uh, because we're, we're working and this is the season of holidays from October through December. There's holidays all over the place and we're busy working with kids, with other things. So finding the time to write is really kind of crucial setting some time aside to be alone where I don't have the phone and the door is locked so to speak um, the nice thing about going to the RIMO uh, meetings meetups is that we are in a separate space so I am there at a place where my family cannot come and ask me can I find their socks for them um, oh you're writing I should leave you alone. Why, yes, yes, you should. <laughs> um, I also am a poll worker. So the election day is always a big, let's just bring everything to a screeching halt after we started the first two days of work. Um, however, I do take a notepad and I do write in between moments when I get a chance to think uh, while at the polls. I like what the RIMOs do in that they will set you up with goals to accomplish. And they do something with the, uh, you know, the old Boy Scout journey beads. Uh, there, they, <laughs> there is the mistress of the beads and she has a huge bin of all different colored beads. And then you accomplish different things throughout the course of November and you receive a bead for them. Uh, for example, the typing with my nose, I get a bead for doing that. Um, sitting and typing over a thousand words at one sitting without getting up is another one, you get a bead for that. Uh, we have a mascot. It is an albino weasel. And if you put the albino weasel in your story, then you get a, a ruby red bead. So all these different things, uh, they're like getting a goal in a video game and you get the little rush from it to keep on going. Uh, they're also available to talk about things and they do, they do sprints and they do a bunch of different little contests on Facebook as well as on the um, nano forums. So there, there are options to get involved and to talk to people when you're having a problem or if you have, I, I've reached this point and I don't know what to do next. So there are people available to talk to you about these things. Um, I try to write a little bit every day because I'm one of those people who does play video games and I like to accomplish the different goals in a video game. It gives you a little bit of a, a push. And one of those goals is to write every day. And if you write every day and input it into the NaNoWriMo uh, profile, then you get acknowledgement and acknowledgement is good it's helpful um, I this will be my first nano interacting with people on Twitter I'm not certain how that's gonna go because Twitter can be a vast black hole 
And I find that if I am on social media, I type social media and I am encouraging to other people instead of doing my own writing. So I have to definitely limit myself as to the amount of social media that I, I take advantage of during this time. But I keep on track by going through the going after the uh, the awards that Nano offers you and they're just little badges it's not a concrete award but it, it does make a difference to me personally as I'm writing to be able to okay I've accomplished this okay I'm halfway there I've I've got this many words to write this day and it'll bring my my it's really neat because you can input how much you've written and it will count all the words and then it will give you a little chart that tells you exactly how far you are and how much time you have to get done and how many other things you have to accomplish before you uh, get to your goal of 50,000 words. And I find that enormously helpful. So. All right, Christine, can you unmute your mic one more time? I'll mute you at the end, but um, what things do you do to stay on track? I mean, what is, what is the, um, the best resources that you have and that, um, what keeps you the most motivated to keep going? At? Okay. Well, with me, like I said, I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. Um, I, before November, I read the book, No Plot, No Problem. <laughs> um, and that helped me. Um, I did, in, in, through my novel, I wound up throwing a tragedy in. I, I didn't have the heart to do it to them during the, the course of the novel, but it was in one of my characters past. So that gave her some, uh, that gave her internal feelings to write about and what you could see some of her motivations, where they came from. And um, I also wrote a car accident into, into the story. Um, it was, an idea that I thought was helpful um, because I was stuck and I needed a direction to go. So when I thought of incorporating that into the story, it gave me a direction that I could go to lead me there. And um, the word count that Nano has on their website really, really was a motivator for me keeping track of my word count each day. Um, and my husband was a wonderful coach. There were days where I just sat down in front of my computer ready to write. And I was just like a total mess. And my husband said, Chris, you're going to do this. You're going to be fine. You have it in you. You can do this. And he just helped support me. And so I just started to type. Um, and um, I guess I guess that's about all I can say right now. Okay. Mitzi, what do you do during the month that helps you to just stay focused? Well, do you use any of the resources? Um, I use the, I use the nano website. I like my chart. I like to see it go up, you know, with words. That's very, makes you feel very good. <clears throat> makes you feel like you have accomplished something. But uh, <clears throat> I was going to say that things that really help me is coffee and <laughs> a microwave. Being a single person through most of this nano that I have done, was really good. I had no little kids knocking on the door. I might have a cat having a, you know, a cat fight, but no husband, nothing like that. So I had my own time to myself. That is great. But now that I'm married, it's a little bit different. 
and I've got a dog who needs to go out every so often and a husband who walks with a walker. So I this, this nano is going to be a little bit different than other nanos. I've got my door shut now. It, my door sh will be shut November 1st <clears throat> and nobody will be able to come in. I don't care if it's a cat, it's a dog, it's my daughter, my husband, no one, unless they have a glass of wine for me. And I can't see the dog bringing me a glass of wine. I think we all, ha we all approach this in different ways, depending on what our, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> let me get a drink, and this is water. <clears throat> depending on what our life and our environment is like. <clears throat> I find that if I am, if you're by yourself and you say you're going to do something, you sometimes think you have all the time in the world to do it. Nano doesn't let you have all the time in the world. It tells you you've got the month of November, that's it. So you've got to do it. And I think that's what's really good. It gives you a deadline. It says, here's what you got to do. And you've got to do it. And you've got to work your life around that if you're going to do it. Okay. Um, I love, you really touched upon the, the value of visually seeing your progress every day. Um, if you go on to NaNoWriMo on their website, you set up a profile and then you can set up a project, which is whatever book or work that you are working on. But once you set that up, again, you can plug the numbers in and every day you will just see that arrow going higher and higher, which for me, I am a visual person. So that I think is one of the most motivating things to keep me going. It also tells me like, okay, I only have to write another 300 words and then I can stop for the day because there are times when you just don't want to keep going. Um, but that, that stat for me and seeing that, and again, um, Rebecca had touched upon the point that we are both kind of perfectionists so that when we sit down on November 1st, I am committing myself to writing every single day of the month. Now, there are a couple of days of the month where I literally write a sentence. I am supposed to be writing today. Today is not that day. And that's all I'm writing. And I actually include it in my word count for the day. And then at the end, I will delete it from the last day's word count because it's not part of the story, but I can at least, I, I'm determined to get that badge. Even if I finish my 50K by like the 24th or 25th, I have to write something every day until the 30th just to get that last little badge that says I wrote every single day. Um, not everybody is, is competitive that way, but um, for me, that it's just like, I, if I have a goal that is within reach that all I have to do is write some words every day, then by golly, I'm going to get that last little badge that I can. It's kind of like that elusive bead with the albino weasel. I love that. Um, for me, I think that this, the resources that I use the most, um, I do have a few buddies. Um, when you're on the Nano website, you can find buddies or you can, through word of mouth, find people and, you know, share your um, username and Therefore, you have somebody else that you know is going through the same thing. And if you go to their profile, you can see how they're doing. You can see, do they need a little word of encouragement or do they need a congratulation? But it's kind of nice to share that. Um, I do utilize social media. Um, I'm much more into Facebook than I am into Twitter. But I will kind of journal my way through on Facebook as to what kind of day I'm having. And I reach my word count. And even if people aren't doing NaNoWriMo, I'm amazed at the support that various friends and family will give you. Um, I'm also a mom with a family, and yes, I have two grown adult children and a husband and a cat, but they sometimes still do need um, attention. Um, they do need to eat, and while I, I, I love the idea of the crock pot or the microwave, um, I basically try to do meals a bunch at a time and it's like, okay, the, there's food in the refrigerator. When you're hungry, you get what you want and prepare it because I'm not going to make a meal every single night this month. I don't have the time. So that gives me a little bit of freedom having older kids that I can um, kind of do that. I do know people, however, that have had little ones and they just 
you know, if they have to get up a half an hour early every day and just do 500 words at a time, um, that's how you can get through. Um, another thing that I do find is, um, this is because I'm a, a music theater buff. Um, my daughter introduced this to me, but there is actually a musical written about NaNoWriMo. It is called the NaNoWriMo Musical. And you can find it on YouTube. You can find it, um, just Google it, it will come up. But I find that I will usually watch that October 30th, October 31st to really get in the mood. And then if I'm having a rough day and I just, I, I don't wanna get lost on YouTube, like looking at other things or putting on videos. And so I just put that on. At least it's giving me a little break, but it's still keeping me focused on this is what you need to be doing next. And it goes through all of the problems and challenges of Nano, all the different characters you can imagine. They're telling a story, but they're doing it while really taking you through the journey of what Nano is all about. And um, I encourage you, if you have never seen the Nano Rhyme musical, to take the time to watch that this year because it truly is um, a work of art. Um, I give major, major kudos to those. Uh, let's now segue into, I know that we've talked about what keeps us motivated. Uh, for those we've all done it at least once, what has been your biggest challenge of NaNo? I mean, have you had days when it is just, I know Sue talked about losing, uh, losing a family member. I know that we all sometimes have been sick, but what if, if you can remember back to maybe one of the most challenging times of NaNo, where maybe you didn't make your goal or you wasn't sure you were gonna make your goal, um, but what is the hardest thing? And can you think of a challenge that was really hard that you did get through and how did that happen? Um, Christine, let's start with you this time. Well, I'm done with my notes. So um, um, the first year I got behind on my word count, seeing the, seeing the arrow going up, like you said, on the nano webpage, um, really was a helper for me. But the first year I tried, I got behind early and just realized that I just couldn't do it that year. Um, and the next year that I tried, um, I was taking care of my father. And so that year was just a scrap altogether. Um, the year I finally did finish, um, one day I had no idea what I wanted to write about. I just was, there were days where my characters just helped me along. They just took me in directions that, ooh, I wasn't sure I was writing, going there, but they helped me along. Um, but one day I looked down and I saw my cat and I decided to give two of my characters a pet kitten. <laughs> And it was just a, a a dumb thing, but I was able to get my 1,667 words in, describing the kitten, making it a calico so I could describe what it looked like in more words, and um, that they needed to go to this pet store and get supplies for it, and that really sounds dumb, but I made it that day and after the end of the month when I started polishing the story um, that wound up needing some polishing because <laughs> that day was just a little bit crazy um, but after polishing it it wasn't so bad it, it, I it was able to, to flow with the rest of the story. Um, but that was just something that I ran up against. It was just a wall that day. Okay. So why don't you share your, your biggest challenge? What was, uh, or one that you can remember? And As always, I have a couple. <laughs> 
I get to a point in this story, I, I write the stories I want to read. If I'm going to write other things that other people want to read, I don't always feel happy with what I've written. I like to write something that I would be interested in. And sometimes you just get to the point where you're so sick of your characters, you don't want to talk to them anymore. <laughs> and I find that very difficult. Um, now, the year with my dad, my dad had cancer and he had been ill for some time. And we knew that, that it, the time was coming. Um, and as I was sitting there, I had his hand in, in one of mine. And in the other, I had my pen and I was basically writing down all the feelings and what was happening as it was happening. Um, grief is, a, is also a motivator for, for writing. And you know that a lot of great writers, they pour their, their feelings and their emotions out onto the printed page. And for me, that worked out fairly well because I was able to write after the fact. But um, really, when you're dealing with something like that, other than that, I did not get much writing done for that entire season. I mean, I, I do write other than Nano, but I was just writing freeform what was coming out of my head at the time. It wasn't particularly plotty, but I was able to use it later on in other things. That is one of the really important things about writing. It's not, people say, well, if I wrote what I knew, then I wouldn't be writing science fiction or about elves or things because those aren't real. But the thing is, you're writing about what you know, you're writing about your feelings and what you're going through in life. Um, all good literature is about the constant struggle to be human. And we can be going through difficult times and it will lead eventually to something better or to a funny story. Because I can tell you that some of the worst times in my life have led to very funny stories afterwards. Um, my point is that I wrote, I did not attain my goal, but I used it later on after the fact, um, especially in April when I was writing uh, for the anthology for Greater Lehigh Valley Writers Group and was able to come up with, with things that were tied into the theme of the anthology, which was rite of passage and seemed really kind of uh, timely with what I was going through at the time. I had determined I was going to write about death and then I was experiencing it in the time that I should have been writing. And it did lead later on to, to writing, but there's just sometimes when you have to stop and deal with the things that you're dealing with. You don't have to finish every year. You don't have to do 50,000 words. You have to do what's right for you and what's healthy for you. And, but this year I'm doing my 50,000 words. I have, I have the goal. So time to move on. So. Thanks. Mitzi, tell us about your biggest challenge and how did you overcome it? My biggest, <clears throat> right now it's getting my voice cleared. <clears throat> right, uh, my biggest challenge was on no was in November 2010 because I was taken up to New York State to meet my future husband's family over Thanksgiving, and I had to take my computer with me because I was going to write for Nano that year. Damn it, I was going to do it. I don't care where I was. The good thing was his daughter is Shannon Delaney, who is a published author, and she understood the whole thing. His son also writes, and she, he understood the whole thing. And Morgan had, at that time, seven self-published novels. 
So he understood the whole thing. But that was still difficult for me as somebody who didn't know the family. Here I come with my computer. That was my challenge that year. The years that I was working, it was dragging that computer across the state as I would go from nursing home to nursing home as an administrative RN. And writing in the hotel when you're so exhausted, just from the drive from Easton to Pittsburgh or places unknown. And you go, oh God, I just wanna to go to bed. But you don't, you open up the laptop and you start to write. That to me is, makes you the, a real writer. And what Sue is saying about writing through bad times, I've often thought that if people would journal on a daily basis, we'd have no need for psychologists or psychiatrists because you get those things out there, you put them down and you feel better. I sort of like do that on my face, on my Mitzi Reinbold Facebook page. I say, good morning at Facebook family and friends. I've had a lousy night or I've had a great night. I'm going to do this today or that to, or that. And I think that's part of being a writer is like Sue said, getting that stuff, that emotional stuff out there. And you put that into your fiction. Fiction is not really fiction. Fiction is somebody's story, some character's story, but you've put your emotions into. And that's enough for me. <laughs> Rebecca, biggest challenge. How did you deal with it? I think last year was probably the most challenging year. It wasn't anything like situational. It was just for some reason, like I wasn't connecting with my story as well as I wanted. And it was like, I think the first year since 2012 or so where I genuinely considered giving up because it just every day felt like a slog. And that was really hard. And it, I, I have depression. So trying to like force myself to like stay that disciplined can be really hard, especially when it's like, this isn't fun. It didn't feel fun for most of the month. I guess the way I got through it was just kind of my own feeling of like being competitive with myself because it's like, I know I can win. I know I can do this because I've done it before. I know that it sucks, but I've done it. And it's also like every year if I win, I also get like for Christmas, my mom buys me like a winner's t-shirt from the NaNoWriMo store. And I'm like, I want that collection to get bigger. It's like, I want that pride. So it was just kind of this like, I just had to rely on this like tiny spark to just keep me going. And it's like, I would complain. I would consider giving up. I would sit there staring at my screen during a writing session, wondering like, why am I doing this? This sucks. But I just kept going because of that spark, I guess. And, and that's a, a really good point that um, I do want to bring up. Nano also does have a wonderful line of merchandise that you can, um, they, they have shirts, they have coffee mugs, they have posters, they have journals. I mean, they have a lot of different things that can help keep you going. Um, I do buy her that winter shirt every year. Um, I got the winter shirt for the one in, in um, November that I got my 50,000. Even though I've hit my goals in the camp ones, they don't have the same, uh, they don't, it's not quite the same fanfare. I mean, you're still ma matching your goals. I do buy a camp t-shirt every year that I'm participating. So I get that. It's like, um, that's kind of like that pinnacle. I know for me, um, getting that certificate that you can print out at the end too, like if you hit your 50K, you can go on and they have a template and you can put in your name and the title of your story and it's signed by, you know, the chief executive officer, Grant Faulkner, and you get that certificate that said you did it. And 
you can um, hang it on your wall or plaster it on your door or whatever you want to do. But um, for me, the biggest challenge, I think, is just staying motivated. Um, I know that I have a little sign um, that I put up in front of my computer saying, writer at work, please leave me alone. So if that's up, people know to just turn around and walk away. Um, the most challenging for me, I've done Nano three times now, November um, 2018, which is when I drafted my first novel of the series, was the hardest for me. Um, I have my own business. I, I do online tutoring and um, English classes to uh, the homeschool community. And that year I actually had um, close to 30 students, which I usually have 10 to 15. Uh, I don't know why I took on that many, but here I was in November. Um, I had also decided I was gonna go back to school and get my degree in publishing for writers. So all of a sudden, all three of these things were just piling on top of me. And at the end of October, I was like, oh my God, what have I done? Um, I had an instructor who was prodding me to get my first book. Um, I had to get query letters ready. I had to write a book proposal because I was going to a conference to pitch it. And it's just all of that on top of, you know, grading essays and compositions and then still like getting my word counts in. And when you hit that 30,000 section, uh, for me, it's the middle of the month that is the hardest. I am excited at the beginning. And I'm all on fire. I, you know, I write usually higher than my word count, sometimes two, three thousand a day. The middle of the month, all of a sudden, it's like I don't like this anymore. This is not fun anymore. It's work. I don't want to have to sit down. It, it almost just becomes drudgery for a, a week. And that's when I will watch that Nano Rhino musical because it's gonna make me laugh. And um, again, I'm lucky that I have a, a buddy right in the house, and we will just encourage each other. Just get through this week. Because once you get to that 40,000 mark, all of a sudden you're in that home stretch. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm like 20% to go, that's it. And you see that bar like so close to the top that all of a sudden the, for me, the energy just kind of picks up. But it's that middle of the month slump that is the real hardest. So that any of you that are, you know, going into Nano, prepare for that. You know, be gentle with yourself during that time frame. That's why I try to bank a few extra words at the beginning of the month. So that if I do have a few of those days where maybe I only write a thousand words instead of my 2000, I'm still not falling too far behind. Um, so to just keep that in mind that, you know, no matter how we plan for nano, life happens. And we are all sometimes going to be throwing those curveballs that we just don't expect and you just deal with it. And worst case scenario, if you don't get to your 50,000, you're still participating in nano and you are still creating something from nothing. You know, you've taken ideas from your head and you're putting them on paper. Um, I know that some of you are coming back to finish. Missy's coming back to finish a book. Um, it took me a year and a half to finish a book. After I had written the draft, I put it on the shelf and didn't want to ever look at it again. And it took me a year to pull it out and say, now you get to revise. Um, I think that's the other most challenging part. It's not during November. I know that you think that November can be really, really hard at times, and um, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the revision process makes Nano look like a walk in the park sometimes, because now you're taking the, the finished manuscript and you're making it better. And that's where, I, for me, I feel like that's where the real work comes in. But to get to the other end, like that whole process, to get to that, your book is finished, you're holding it in your hand, that's what makes Nano worth it for me. Um, I do want to just touch base really, really quickly on a couple of things, and then I'm going to ask you all to have like just a closing thought as to what, you know, if you have one piece of advice to get to offer to everybody who is getting ready for NaNoWriMo. Um, we are going to um, hopefully be giving a few extra sessions. Um, this has been an introduction. And um, I'm going to be talking with Book and Puppet and the Eastern Book Festival um, Planning Committee. We are hoping sometime in mid-November to offer a just a check-in um, so that people can come back who have enjoyed this session. And that will be a little more interactive rather than have a panel and a webinar. It'll be more interactive where we can open it up and take questions from the attendees that are there. Um, we will film that live just to see how everybody's doing. Um, what challenges are you facing? We can encourage each other. 
And we want to do the same thing again in early December to do kind of a, a nano wrap up just to see how did you do? Um, did, you know, was it as wonderful as you thought it would be? Was it harder than you thought it would be? Um, I guarantee if you do nano, uh, most folks, I think, come back and do it again. It kind of gets in your blood and it's like um, it becomes a part of your life. So we will be um, posting those, Eastern Book Festival. Uh, make sure you just kind of touch back on that and you will see the dates that come up. We'll also try to get it on social media um, when those dates will happen. I do encourage people as well, if you're doing nano and the month of November comes and now you've finished, to not let your writing just stop at that point. There are so many places that you can get involved and have that sense of community that NaNo gives. Um, we have local writers groups. I know the Greater Lehigh Valley Writers Group offers a weekly writers cafe where you can come and it becomes kind of like your critique group that you can read your stuff and they can give you advice and input. Um, we are in the process, the Greater Lehigh Valley Writers Group, to um, establish smaller writing critique um, small groups where you can just find like three or four people that maybe write in your genre and they will maybe become your permanent critique partners uh, a little bit more in depth. Um, NaNo itself does the revisions in January and February. They do Camp NaNo in April and July. So maybe you're going to work on revisions or maybe you're going to start your next book. But the point of NaNo really is to just write keep writing, you know, nobody else, and, and I'll start with like the closing thought, nobody else can tell the story that's inside your head. You're the only one that has created this idea. And if you think of the, the thousands and thousands and thousands of books that are out there in the world, they're all different. Even though the plot lines might be similar, they're all different. And that to me is what the amazing bit of, of writing is, is that we are, um, we are those that are brave enough to take the ideas in our head and put them on the pages and create something that someday it might be exactly what somebody needs to read. And you, you, you touch that. I always say, I don't care if I don't sell a hundred copies of my book. I want to touch one heart that's out there. And I actually got a piece of fan mail um, this summer that told me how much that book meant to her and that it really touched her in places in her life. That's me. Is, uh, that's what I'll keep writing for that reason alone. Um, so I think if I have one piece of advice is to don't doubt yourself, even though you will during the process, but to know that you are the only one that can write that. And a special shout out to those that are older. Um, I always said that if Grandma Moses could start painting in her 70s. I started writing in my 60s, seriously. And you're never too old and it's never too late to get that book done. Um, so that, that's my final piece of advice. Um, why don't we ask Christine if you can unmute yourself and share one final piece of advice for the writing community. Okay, I found the button. <laughs> um, I guess one thing I can say is be kind to yourself you are doing something that is very, very daunting and that most people in the world would never even dream of doing, especially the craziness of doing it in one month. Um, it's just a kind of lunacy. <laughs> um, but you need to, to be kind to yourself. Uh, Realize that there are days that are going to be harder than others. Um, and just get encouragement wherever you can. Uh, the, the nano support that's available is helpful and is there. And turn to them if you need, if you need to. And I, I have, and they have helped me uh, bounce ideas off of each other. So that's my piece of advice. All right. Um, Nitsi, why don't you give us your final bit of advice? People have always said that writing is a solo, lonely activity. It doesn't have to be. Nano has proved that. 
And I'm going to give a sh another shout out to the Greater Lehigh Valley Writers Group. I've been a member since the early, since 1990s. I was once the president of the group, not requesting to be president again. I'm an old lady and I'm a tired old lady. But you have a community of writers who understand how you feel. And no matter what you're writing, you can find a buddy there. And our cafe Zoom that we do is wonderful. It's given me a lot of encouragement to continue. And I really think anybody who is writing out there all by themselves needs to find a group. You need to find buddies. And Glivwig is one place where you can get that. Nano Nan NaNoWriMo is another one. Give it a shot. What do you got to lose? What you got to gain is 50,000 words. Thanks, Missy. Rebecca, what are your final thoughts? What piece of advice did you give? I think I have two. The first one is it's okay to fail. I think everyone who's participated regularly has failures in their track record. I do. I have two. I just accept that happened. It's okay. I mean, it's easier said than done. Believe me, I am a perfectionist and I am competitive, but it's okay. But also just like, let yourself have fun with it. At its core, Nano kind of feels like this crazy adventure. And like you can feel the spirit of all of these other participants all around the world who are going on like unique but similar journeys. And it's, just, it's fun. Like let yourself play, let yourself explore. Just try to find that sort of lightheartedness and humor if you can. And like also acknowledge you are writing something and that is huge all by itself. Even if you only write a sentence, you are creating something from nothing. So embrace that, embrace the magic in that. That's my advice, I guess, for anyone, whether they're new or veterans, just embrace that and have fun. Thanks, Rebecca. Sue, can you give us your final thoughts? There we go. Well, my final thought is give it a try. It's a lot of fun to let the stories out. But especially if you have children in your life, let them see you writing encourage them to write. There are young writers projects in the school districts, the libraries have them as well, that encourage kids to write. We have a teen writers group here at Emmaus. It's really important for us to encourage creativity and even more important empathy. And when you're writing, you're putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. It's important for our future leaders to be able to put themselves in other people's situations. And writing is one of the best ways to do it. Another good one is reading, but I would say that because I'm a librarian. Um, please encourage your children to write. And the best way to do that is to model that behavior and write yourself. Well, don't write yourself, but do your own writing. Thanks so much, Sue. Um, that, that does remind me, um, one of my students, his uh, fourth grader, fifth grader this year, is doing Nano this year because um, she's seen me over the years and she's decided she's going to write a story. And I know the libraries sometimes have the young writers programs where they write books. And I know my daughter has a book at the Nazareth Library that she's probably going to hate me for mentioning now. But um, she wrote it when she was like 11 or 12, and it's still there. And it's it really exciting for students to, to, to realize that they can do that. Um, I always encourage my students to not let their fear of writing and grammar get in the way. Um, they all have amazing ideas. 
get them on paper because you can fix spelling, you can fix grammar, but if you let that be a, a fear and it keeps you from getting it on paper, then then we're losing out. You know, I, I always tell him the story of um, Rawls who wrote, um, oh, the, I'm having a mental block, the, the two dogs, the two Han dogs. And um, he was literate. He, he basically could not read or write. He, you know, he, he had a second grade spelling level. And his daughter was the one that found the story and said, we are going to fix this. And it became a classic. Um, I do want to point out as a final thought, there are hundreds of um, nano participants who have gone on to have their books published. Um, there are quite a few relatively famous. Um, I do need my notes for this, but um, some of the past authors that have had their books um, published and become you know, bestsellers, Sarah Groom's Water for Elephants, Erin Morgenstein's The Night Circus, Hugh Howey's Wool, Rainbow Rowell's Fangirl, and uh, one of the favorites in this household is Marissa Meyer's Cinder. Um, they all started at Nano. So you never know where your story might take you. And it doesn't really matter if it becomes a bestseller, as, as all of you have said. The fact that you are creating something from nothing is really what makes Nano special. I'm really hoping that we have helped to encourage you and motivate you. We hope that you are going to join um, the Nano family. Keep in mind that there are now a half a million of us in this family that are going to be sitting down. That's pretty amazing to think that we're going to be sitting down with a half a million people on November 1st to all do something together. And yet we're going to have 500,000 unique things at the end. Um, that is a, an amazing goal. I'm sure that when Chris Beatty first started with his 20 friends that first year, they had no idea what Nana was going to become. And they always say that no matter what you envision Nano to be, it's going to be way more than you can imagine. So we will, um, we will leave you with that thought. Like I said, we ask you to keep, um, keep track of the Eastern Book Festival's website. For around mid-November, we'll get together, and again in December. I want to thank again Eastern Book Festival for including us in this. We really have enjoyed being a part of the festival this year. And um, we look forward to other workshops and webinars. Um, if any of you are interested in any facets of writing, please check out the rest of their events. They have some amazing things planned. And hopefully next year, we can be back in person again. With that, we say um, have a wonderful November. We'll be thinking of you. And right on. Bye-bye, everybody.